So good day, everybody. And it's nice to see everyone out here. And uh, I'm going to be talking about emotional well-being today. Uh, more so this topic has become very important given the pandemic that we have been living in. You know, something that uh, the whole is taking the whole world by surprise. Um, even today, nobody knows when and how it's going to end and where we are moving out from here. While we are awaiting the vaccine, but yet there are a lot of mixed emotions even about the vaccine. So uh, given the situation, I think it would be a good time, a good chance today to uh, address this particular topic, this particular issue, because um, it's something that we need uh, to tide over personal crisis also a lot of times. Of course, this pandemic being one of those unique uh, situations which the nature has thrown at us. Um, so let's see how and what we can do with it. So now when we talk of emotions, what does everyone understand by emotions? Um, emotions come in different forms in different ways that people present it. You know, it could include anything from happiness to anger to frustration to jealousy to sadness. But in this, does that mean that a particular emotion is right or wrong? Absolutely not, you know, so there's nothing called a right or wrong emotion, but they are just emotions that we all experience from time to time, uh, depending upon the situation we are placed in, the situation we are facing. Um, sometimes we understand how to tide over them, sometimes we don't. So emotions also keep changing and moving with time accordingly. Uh, so what becomes important here, while we all know that there is really no right or wrong emotion, uh, then why is it that uh, some emotions cause bring us all the benefits that we want to and some take away everything that we also have why are we faced in such a situation why such dilemmas confront us from time to time uh, why with changing time we are talking so much about emotional intelligence and about um, why has it become more important than um, iq general intelligent caution today um, so let's let's dig further into it to figure out as to what and why these things happen. So when we talk of emotions, what exactly becomes important for us? Like I said, emotions come, you know, there's really nothing right or wrong about an emotion. They, they come in all forms and the, all of us in our day-to-day -day lives, multiple times in the day, are met with, are confronted with several different kinds of emotions. So where does our role as an individual become important in? in overcoming these emotions or in taking care of these emotions in a way that whatever comes out of it you know comes in our favor rather than goes against us so we all, all know we face emotions i think the first thing that we all got to understand is we've got to be aware of the various emotions that we face from time to time uh, multiple times in the day once we are aware a lot of clarity comes to us you know it's like seeing our reflection in the mirror understanding because uh, most of the time we sit in denial oh no i didn't get angry oh no i was upset because somebody else did something to me so you know in situations like this and when we start talking and behaving in these in this particular fashion what happens is we go into a self denial mode you know where we're trying to say that no it is not the emotion that caused me the issue it is because sorry my video has gone off yeah I'm sorry so it is not uh, that I did something wrong, but it's because somebody else did something to me. So the moment we go in that kind of phase, we go into a denial mode that there is no issue at my end. I don't need to do anything. It's because someone did something and I just reacted or responded in that fashion. But what we need to understand is we need to be aware of what we are responding, how we are responding and what we plan to do from there. So that is exactly where the self-awareness comes in. When we talk of self-awareness, what is it that we want to do? What has we need we need to understand that what is it that causes that wrong expression of a particular emotion or expression? So what are the triggers that we face in our day-to-day -day life? They could be, of course, this is not a complete or an exhaustive list, the list goes on and on. But some of it could be like, oh, you, you know, it wasn't my fault and I had to take bear the brunt. Or I did my work because somebody else didn't do execute it right, I had to bear the brunt. So what are these little, little instances trying to tell us? You know, they're trying to tell us maybe I'm feeling disrespected. Maybe I'm not feeling powerless. Maybe I'm feeling excluded. 
maybe i'm feeling disconnected maybe i'm feeling frustrated and what do we do in the in that particular moment sometimes you know when we feel when we are in these kind of feelings we just go all out and we blurt out something that we shouldn't be doing or we resort to an action or an activity that again we should not be doing so what we do is instead of uh, responding calmly to a situation we tend to react impulsively so what do we do you know when we react impulsively because when we react impulsively there is um, there is really we cannot undo what we have already done but so so it becomes all the more important for us to understand what we are doing and ensure that what we are doing happens in a better way we do not lose control over ourselves we do not um, give in to the situation just because i could not control myself so how do we overcome those kind of situations so once we have identified and understood that you know what is causing this problem or this concern at our end what are the triggers that we are faced with and how to the next step becomes how do we regulate these triggers how do we regulate ourselves that these triggers the triggers that we feel in this particular fashion where we feel okay you know i am feeling hurt and i am feeling disrespected or i am feeling angry does it overtake us but we take control of these emotions rather than them controlling us and understand that ultimately it is i who decides whether i want to react or i want to respond peacefully so what do we understand by self regulation because this becomes a very important component here that we need to take care of ourselves we need to regulate our behavior we need to regulate our feelings so what do we do what exactly when we say self regulation what are we doing it is nothing but a ability to monitor and control our own behavior our emotions our thoughts and alter them in accordance with the demands of the situation so in putting putting it up in a very very simple form which is one word it is nothing but it is adaptability so it is how well we can adapt to a situation how well we can um, take charge of the situation so that is what is is uh, self regulation so what when we, sometimes we you know suppose we say okay I'm, i was very angry and i was very upset so what is the what for, number one like we said we first have to be aware of that particular emotion we have to understand that okay you know now this is that anger that is attacking me this anger which is going to bug me so do i give in to anger or do i not give in to anger so for that we have to become aware that from our past experiences that you know each time we have given into that particular emotion what we have caused is more harm than benefit to ourselves so again it becomes important that we are aware that we do not want to give in to this emotion so what do we do after we feel that you know when you have decided you don't want to give in you start thinking you start your thinking process comes into the view and then that's where uh you start regulating those emotions so what what do we understand by regulation like we just said it is nothing but in simple terms it is our ability to adapt to that situation ability to adapt to those moments and once we adapt to those moments we will see that you know uh, all the unpleasantness attached to it goes away so how how do we adapt and how do we regulate ourselves so what can we do suppose we understand that feelings are something we feel they do not have a voice they do not really have a loud voice to it it's not that somebody is going to hear or somebody is going to come and tell you what to do but if we start assessing it at our and what is it that we will come to life for us suppose we are saying okay and there's a lot of sadness in here i'm feeling sad i felt sad for whatever reason what is it you know that you are trying to tell yourself okay i need to go and cry it out rather than blurt it out i need to cry it out suppose that okay i'm feeling very lonely today you know instead of going and screaming at somebody or trying to disrupt you know other people who are sitting together that's generally what happens when i'm feeling lonely i cannot see other people sitting happily it's trying to tell me that i need to make a i need to take that effort and i need to go ahead and connect with somebody so instead of you know um, talking badly about someone or instead of uh, sulking all around what we can do is maybe just go up to somebody and you know greet them pleasantly exchange pleasantries because that helps us wear off our loneliness suppose there is anger i'm like i'm very very angry and most of the times we 
um, disrupt people's personal space in a moment of anger, in a bout of anger. So what is that anger trying to tell you? Basically, that emotion is trying to tell you that, look, you know, you need to check yourself, you need to check your boundaries. But what happens is because a lot of times we are used to giving to impulsiveness rather than self-regulation, we end up expressing these emotions in a very, very incorrect fashion. Um, suppose you feel you're very anxious. You know, it's simple. Just step back, take a few breaths, and you feel better. You know, you will be able to ward off those few seconds of impulsivity, and you'll be able to think rationally beyond that. Um, similarly, in moments of stress, moments of emptiness, moments of um, resentment, it's mainly these kind of situations where it becomes even more important to uh, self-regulate and to take care of ourselves and to be aware of what we are doing. So, you know, a simple uh, rule which, uh, you know, I tell a lot of people because it may not always be easy for you to, you know, give in to the moment and um, uh, it's not always easy to avoid giving in to the moment and take take charge of yourself. A, bet, a, not, a, not a very uh, common way of uh, beating this kind of an issue is maybe you can make a note somewhere, you know, from where you can see it and make it visible to you on a daily basis that, yes, um, if there is anger, you know, this is what I should be doing. If there is, uh, if I feel low, if I feel sad, if I feel frustrated, uh, this is, these are the things I can do. Because that really helps when you have put it up somewhere where you can see it visually, and um, you could you probably almost see it every day. What it gives you is a certain photographic memory. And that helps when you want to, uh, because it's already sitting in your head, you've kind of conditioned yourself how to behave in that situation and not give in to these things. So that's when uh, making notes around you helps, constantly reminding yourself helps. So once we have, you know, now that we know, you know, when it comes to emotions, we first need to be aware of our emotions, break the denial mode and come to the awareness mode. Once we are aware, we have to understand how to tame those emotions, how to regulate them and how to express them in a way that is pleasant to you and everyone around. But it's, it doesn't always come easy. It's not a natural process where, okay, you know, I'm, okay, this, somebody has told me this is how I should do and I'm going to go out and do it. No, it doesn't happen like that. So what, what we constantly need to do is remind ourselves internally. Once we have identified that, okay, you know, I have a tendency to get angry in all these situations. I have a tendency to feel low and depressed in all of these situations. And then, okay, these, this is what I can do in this situation. So basically we, have, we start telling ourselves time and again. We start repeating it to ourselves. Um, like I said, we make a note of it. We can make a little poster or a placard or something. And you know, put it around from where you can see it easily. And, you know, it stays in your head because each time you see your mind and you are absorbing something so all this calls for a lot of internal motivation so what do i mean by motivation it's the moment you understand the importance of loving yourself you will stop hurting others so the idea is you start loving yourself you start thinking more about yourself you start uh, looking more at yourself that you know is this what you want to do do you want to be in that uh, sad depressed angry mode all the time um, do you want to be in uh, phases which are unpleasant to everybody, which are unpleasant to you, which kind of upsets the whole scenario to an extent that it deprives you of all your opportunities? So absolutely no. So what do you do is you start working towards self-motivating yourself. And with along with self-motivation come other things like discipline. When I say discipline, what does what do I tell myself when I'm trying to discipline myself that I am taking charge and I am going to take control of it. So basically it begins with, again, you know, you master your own thoughts, you take charge of your own thought process. Do not let the thoughts take charge of you. So we do a role reversal there. We become the master and we start taming the thoughts and the emotions and all the feelings that come to us at that time. Because if we cannot control what we think, then of course we are unable to control what we do. So it all stems from a particular thought which then gets converted to an action. So the way we think is what we are going to do. Our actions are going to show that. So beginning right at the, the seed of it begins with, you know, how I feel, how I think. Once we have caught hold of that, automatically our actions will be in our control. You know, like most of the times when it comes to a challenging situation, people will begin with, oh, I cannot do it. There is no way I can do it. So what do you do then? You know, it's a gradual process. You know, it's a step-by-step -step process, which, you know, you start breaking those internal barriers of yourself from 
I cannot do it too. I want to do it. And because I want to do it, I can always tell myself, how am I going to do it? Because I want to do, I need to figure out a way. So how am I going to do it? Once I have a way, however challenging it may seem, which it will seem at the beginning, again, I tell myself, but I am going to try and do it. And once you take the first step, drop first step towards it, believe me, you know, you will, the confidence will always say, yes, of course you can do it. It's not too far away. It's pretty close, you know, just get up there and do it. And that no sooner that can will become will. And it's like, okay, I, I will do it. And you're up there to achieve what you want. So it does get difficult for a lot of people to, you know, um, cover this particular route from I can't do it to I will do it. But again, like I said, it is nothing but it's a, it's a self-discipline. It's an effort that we put in ourselves that takes us up the path like that. So once uh, you have made up your mind, you have motivated yourself, you have got a determination out there talking for you. Trust me, you know, half the battle is one over there. And it's once you start realizing, you know, the little, little changes that you have created in yourself, little positivities that you have got into yourself. Um, it's, it's pretty, you start seeing the effects of it around you and within yourself a lot more pleasant to an extent that that itself acts as a motivation for you to continue these efforts further in a direction which is fruitful and more beneficial to you. So once now we have already crossed three processes of emotional well-being as to you know what are the stages that you ahead, how it moves ahead. So basically once you are aware, once you are aware, you are taking charge of your thoughts and your actions, you are regulating it in a favorable direction. But to regulate it, we need that motivation. We need the determination to do it. And it, trust me, it all comes with practice and effort. Once we are up there, we are motivated. What is the next thing that we want to think of? You know, that will be the main decider of our actions is empathy. Uh, this is something we see a lot or in the little kids and along our growth years we tend to lose this particular trait we tend to forget what empathy is and why it becomes important because we become very self-centered in our own way in our own world so each time you think of empathy or you want to understand what empathy is maybe turn around look at the kids playing in the park see when one kid falls how all of them run to them to help each other and support each other you know, so these these things become important what does empathy how does empathy help us it's basically it is nothing but understanding the other person and what feelings they are having at that point in time so, but this again calls for you know it calls for you to break your comfort zone of sitting and thinking just within and about yourself and you move out of there you know look at yourself as okay you know I'm, i can reach out to the person i can help the person and then comes this thought, okay, you know, that, okay, if I were in that situation, this is how I would love to be treated. The moment you start thinking on that track, uh, the chemicals released in your mind will automatically start making you feel better and better about yourself. And the whole cycle continues from there. Once a particular thought and action makes you feel good about yourself, all you do is you start continuing that chain and the chain just grows and grows and grows. So it's simple, you know, how you would make others feel about themselves is a lot about you. So if I can make somebody feel good about themselves it's because I am feeling good internally about myself. So it's the feelings that I have within me is how I can make others feel from time to time. So it also always said, I can always give what I have. So the same thing is also in terms of feelings. I can always express and, and share the feelings that I hold within myself. If I am very sad, very angry, very irritable, it is very difficult for me to make somebody feel good or somebody make someone feel happy. But if I have understood, you know, over time, I have taken good control of myself and I know exactly how to keep myself in check and allow only the positivity to flow through. So over time, that is what you will automatically get into a practice. And because you conditioned yourself to do that, you are going to be giving that out to people in, in all phases, all, you know, all sorts, at any point in time that you meet people. So once you become empathetic, you know, obviously empathy, we all know today is a much, much needed resource in anything and everything you wish to do. So once you become empathetic, you know, you automatically have put yourself right up there in terms of or self-management in terms of your ability to management people around you. That one particular word empathy is very, very empowering. 
it puts in a law it puts you right up there on the pedestal like telling you okay look you know you have the ability to take charge so this is a quality we look for obviously in a lot of leaders because to be able to lead you have to understand what the team needs or what is the need of the situation and then able to manage and guide accordingly appropriately so it's it's trust me you know it is a process which takes you towards being empathetic every time it may not be possible because ultimately we are human beings we do fault or we do give in to ourselves at times but uh, as you make it a practice as you have decided it one the day you decide okay i am not going to get angry i'm not going to express anger in an unpleasant way i am not going to express any kind of hurt or ill feelings in an unpleasant way in a way that disrupts somebody trust me uh, you know the whole cycle just starts from there sometimes it's the first step and the second step and gradually before you realize you've already been so empathetic that people start looking at you people start looking up to you for um, solutions to their problems to their concerns and that's where then your social skills start growing and, and we all understand the importance of social skills today uh because we need these social skills to be able to grow to thrive in society to put ourselves up there where we want to see ourselves um they're very important because we need to connect well with each other we need to know people around if you want to grow we, we all know the importance of networking to grow but if you are stated poor on social skills and empathy there is no way that you can sustain yourself in the long run so today a lot of people you see you know in their mid career they're defaulting they're losing out because of the intense stress that they live with you know not just the work pressures the domestic pressures and what happens is they break off right from the beginning so forget to uh, be aware of the negative thoughts or the sad emotions but what happens is those emotions become so much a part of them the days uh, people start looking at them like that oh so and so person is always upset or so and so person is always is in a conflict also and suppose he is always fighting then so people ta- start tagging them like that so that's the reason why uh, these things uh, the practice of you know understanding and regulating ourselves becoming more empathetic becomes very important it's not something that can happen overnight but of course you know with the effort with the right direction with the guidance with the determination and the motivation that yes i want to be out there and i want to be empathetic i want to uh, do things which are good for me and people around me automatically when you see yourself in a positive state of mind people around start looking at you like that because you are looking at yourself like that so it a lot depends on how i look at it. if i am happy internally it's going to show on myself it's going to show in every uh, word that i use, uh, use every action that i do or every gesture that i make it is absolutely going to reflect in that and once it starts reflecting in that reflecting in you people start start seeing you like that so that also helps you grow socially uh, professionally personally in every way it helps you tide over different situations so when where, where do we falter most of the times you know when we say okay you know but i tried and yet it didn't happen because so and so person did not cooperate or oh, my boss did this to me now what can i tell my boss so what are we trying to do in all these situations and what again takes us back to the whole cycle of uh, being upset depressed or you know being in an emotional up and what is that takes us there is nothing but uh what we are trying to do in multiple situations is trying to control other people trying to control factors which are not in our control forgetting that what's not in our control there's really nothing we can do about that yet we will say i wish you know my boss had appreciated me better but you know that is not in your control all that is in your control is to do what you have to do uh you know do your stuff well do it do you know meet the expectations go beyond the expectation and then leave it at that because there is no way we can take charge of something which is outside our control so it becomes very really important to understand you know what what is within our circle of control what is outside my circle of control so when i say within our circle of control is the amount of efforts i put in my thoughts my words my actions how i treat others how do i take care of myself because it's be important a lot of times we neglect ourselves no okay i will do this later for myself i want but no that that's not how it works because because for you to be in a good state of mind you know to ensure the re- release of the, pro- the the appropriate chemicals in your brain you need to be taking care of yourself you need 
to be in that happy space for yourself. What I decide, how I choose to handle a situation, all of this is in my control. What is not in my control? What's outside my purview or reach? A lot of times we stay stuck over there in that outside zone saying, oh, but you know, I wish I could change the situation, but really you cannot change the situation. So all you do is you regulate and you adopt yourself and you start moving ahead from there. We cannot change our past. We cannot change what other people do, what other people think, what choices they make, what are they going to do? What is going to be the result of my effort? I can put in the effort. I have no control over the result. You know, like nobody, nobody has any control over the pandemic. Nobody knows when things will change, how it will change. Or uh, which direction are things going to move out? Nobody knows that. So all we have to do is we have to learn to make peace with the situation and move ahead from there. Because if we fail to do that, all we are doing is putting ourselves in bigger and bigger unrest. We are making our lives more and more miserable. So in order to avoid that, it's best for us to take charge from the front, understand what it is that works, what doesn't work, and then um, take it ahead from there. Now, of course, there will still be situations where despite being aware of our emotions, we still don't know how to regulate or how to manage them. So a lot of studies have shown that the best way to regulate and manage emotion is to stimulate your senses. So what happens each time we stimulate our senses, it sends certain signals to our brains, to our mind, which helps us stay in a specific zone. That is the zone of being within ourselves, the zone of being more aware of ourselves. So once we are more aware of ourselves, we can automatically take more charge of ourselves. Um, so all the instant dopamine release and you know the other chemicals which help support us, they start releasing you know when we stimulate our senses. Why also stimulating senses becomes important because we, a lot of our work has moved to the digital section, especially in the last couple of months. So more you are. Uh, stuck onto a little screen for everything, you know, us, uh, we lose connect with nature. And the only way to stay um, sensory stimulated is by, you know, being in connect with nature, going out there, going, jumping out there, uh, seeing different colors in their natural form, experiencing the fresh air. So that is why um, these are all called self-soothing techniques. And it could be anything from, uh, you know, stimulating any particular sense of ours. So we have five sense organs as we all know, you know, there's um, touch, smell, taste, sound, and sight. So each one of us is again different where this is concerned. We all respond differently to uh, different sensations. Some are more appealing to one while the other may be more appealing to another. Like a sight, sight may be more appealing to me, sound may be more appealing to someone else. So we need to understand and see what works for us as a first with a lot of trial and error. It's very easy to figure this out. Um, so just to give you a few examples, Sama mentioned on this sheet. So, you know, if I prefer the visual way of soothing myself, um, don't go for those very heavy bright lights because we all know, you know, they irritate the eyes. And if it's irritating the eyes, it's not sending a happy signal to the mind. So we look at soothing colors, pastel colors, there are a lot of zentangles that people do, a lot of coloring people do, make collages. Do something that is visually appealing to you, something that you would like to see it, not just for a short time for now, but forever. You look at it and you feel good about it. Um, same thing comes with sound. So um, there are a lot of different sounds that we even normally in the day we are exposed to, but a lot of it are outside the normal decibel levels and hence they're very harmful to us. So what we can do is we pull out a few moments in the day. It could be something as little as maybe three minutes, five minutes. You know, it's not that you have to have like a half an hour, or one hour. It's not going to be a stress in those terms. Of course, if you can invest more time in soothing yourself, there's nothing like it. But maybe even five minutes a day works wonders. So when it comes to sounds, identify what are the calming sounds that you, you know, that help you, that you can listen to. If you have access to a beach or you know just a park, go out there, sit there, listen to the waves and the sound, listen to the chirping of the birds. Um, you can Google for ASMR videos. So they are very helpful. You find a lot of them uh, up there um, because sometimes we may not be able to you know go out or you know that we may not find nature sounds that we, you know the, the sounds that we want to find soothing in our vicinity. So that's when you can come back to technology. But as far as possible, try and stick to being out. Look at 
uh, guided meditations and all the Tibetan sounds, which are healing sounds, which come from meditation. Um, in terms of touch, okay, a lot of, uh, you see a lot of adults also holding those little soft toys and cuddling them. What happens is that is being looked at as social stigma a lot of times, but I think again, what is important here is to ignore somebody making those kind of comments, because if that is helping you stay at peace, snuggle up below us, snuggle a soft eye, go ahead and do it. You know, it shouldn't matter if somebody else finds it very kiddish or very immature. That's all right. A good body massage, if you can go for a nice warm shower or a cold shower, depending on, you know, what helps you. Uh, sleeping with a heavy weighted blanket, like a really thick one, is very, 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 very calming, especially for people for whom touch plays an important role in soothing your senses and soothing your minds. In terms of smell, of course, you know, a lot of these are aromatherapy fragrances like the lavender oil, the calendula, um, even the camphor, the burning of camphor is, you know, what helps a lot of people. The incense sticks, of course, nothing like going out there in the fresh air and trying and feeling the air, the sweet smell of the flowers around if you find that. Um, in terms of taste, now this becomes very important because again, um, there's a variety of flavors that everybody responds to. There are some people who like bland food and there's nothing wrong with that. So, you know, for you probably taste may not be something which is uh, uh, your mode of soothing yourself. You could look for the other sense, other sense, you know, stimulation of other senses. Again, you know, if having a nice warm drink, having a nice cold drink also helps somebody. Just taking a cube of ice and putting it in the mouth helps a lot of people, you know, till it just melts off on its own. Um, different flavors of teas, eating slowly, chewing your food well. Some people like to chew the crunchy foods because that crunching, the crunching the food and crunching the, the crunchy sound makes them feel good. Flavors that you're used to, you know, since childhood. Uh, a lot of times you want to go back to those, but again, like, I, you know, those may not always be available to you, an option to you. So um, while these are some of the ways in which you can soothe yourself, of course, the list is endless. Each one at their end can go on discovering more and more ways, and I'm sure you will figure out. But the best way when you are in the moment and you do not want to uh, go all out and, you know, you want to avoid that mess, but you're stuck there and you don't know, it's very, very slow counting in your head. Or or simply focusing on your breathing. Just close your eyes, focus on your breathing. You need to cut yourself out from everything around there. Um, to start to, to take charge of yourself, to take charge of your emotions from there, because um, it's, it's and technically these all of these things happen with practice. So if today if I say, oh, you know, I'll look tomorrow when it happens, I will look into it. But again, it's a habit which I have not formed over the years, but instead the habit that I have formed over the years is to react impulsively instantly. So to break that habit, I need to practice another habit which will help me break that habit. Hence, the importance of practice comes in. And what we keep, the habits that we keep practicing will eventually become our behavior, will become our style of expressing ourselves, our style of portraying ourselves and handling ourselves as well as the situations around. So the more you add to your adaptability, obviously, you know, you go higher on the IQ and the EQ meter both. So it's very important uh, if you wish to grow and you want to see yourself up there sitting, you know, a successful at a personal level and at a professional level that you number one learn to take charge of your emotions uh what the pandemic has highlighted is exactly this is a lot of people are very poor when it comes to emotional control number of cases um, of depression that have been driven up just by this uh in this one particular quarter or rather not quarter but this one particular pandemic has been crazy, something that we've never seen. And purely that again comes down to poor self-regulatory mechanisms. Like you throw an unknown situation with me, you throw a challenging situation with me and I'm there all shaken up. Um, I have no idea what to do. So I'm just acting mad. So because, you know, understanding from there today, this topic stands all the more important. Um, a lot of companies also, you know, now when they are taking in new recruits, besides seeing the other parameters like your academics and your intelligence, um, the other very important parameter that they look at is EQ, that how high are you on the emotional quotient? You know, how emotional are you? How much feelings do you have? Because again, the idea is if you are a happy person, you will automatically be, your work will be more productive. You're going to create an environment which is more conducive for everybody to be there, work and take each one ahead. So from these angles, uh, again, you know, the stress 
today, I mean, on emotional well-being is very, very high. Um, yeah, anything anybody wants to ask, any questions, any doubts, I'm open to that.